Hi, I'm Scott Wright, and live from the Gallup Riverfront campus in Omaha, Nebraska, this is Gallup's Call to Coach, recorded February 6, 2015. Call to Coach is a resource for those who want to help others discover and use Gallup share tactics, insights, and strategies to help coaches maximize the talent of individuals, teams, and organizations around the world. If you have questions, comments, or contributions during the webcast, we have a live chat room available right below the video window. If you are listening to the recorded version of this webcast and have questions or you need custom solutions built for small, medium, or large organizations, please contact Gallup at coaching at gallup.com. You can also catch the video and uh, both audio or streaming and downloadable audio for offline listening to past shows over at coaching.gallup.com. And don't forget to visit gallopstrengthcenter.com for all your coaching resources and training needs. I'm filling in today for Jim Collison, who's helping some college students learn more about their entrepreneurial talents uh, from Gallup's Entrepreneurial Profile 10 assessment. So he's not here today, but uh, I'll handle the show for him, and he will be back again very soon. And regular viewers of College Coach will recognize our host, Jeremy Petrosini. Jeremy is a senior learning and development consultant here on the Omaha Riverfront. And Jeremy, welcome to the show. You are live from an airport somewhere in the U.S., uh, right? Mini Minneapolis, beautiful, sunny, snowy Minneapolis. Yeah, so yeah, I will uh, I will do my best to mute too if there's background noise, different times. But welcome everybody, glad you're here. Um, excited for another uh, another interview here with with actually one of one of our Gallup seasoned coaches. So it's always fun. Any of you who have been through any of our public training programs, um, we've uh, purposefully kind of captured a lot of kind of key comments, um, statements, best practices from some of our Gallup coaches in those in that video content. But it's always fun, too, that occasionally we'll bring in some of our Gallup coaches uh, for Call to Coach. So uh, many of you who are, are, again, fans of strengths, fans of um, Call to Coach even, are familiar with kind of the mission and why we do what we do, but want to welcome any of you who are new as well. Um, part of our mission at Gallup, again, with helping the world, we know, again, with over 7 billion people, helping them discover um, and live out you know, their strengths, we have a goal to say, all right, we may not get to everybody, but if we can get to a billion, and in getting to that billion, we believe that a million coaches um, are what we need to really kind of help us begin to create that momentum. So it's really fun. As of today, we're um, quickly approaching 11 and a half. Um, so we're just over 11.4 million people that have completed Strength Finder, and it continues to grow every day. So it's fun to watch that on the uh, Gallup Strength Center site. But um, our, our guest today is Mike Kinney. Mike is a... Uh, a uh, veteran of Gallup, been with the firm 25 years, right, Mike? I always like talking yes. to people like you and Heather who look like you're 25, but yet will we'll, we'll not, sh- oh. we'll not disclose your age, right? <laughs> Thanks, Jeremy. Something on the water in the riverfront. Must be, must be. Uh, Mike, Mike has been with Gallup, I mentioned 25 years, but has spent really the last 15 years um, as a, a talent manager analyst, um, working directly with uh, both Gallup's uh, Strength Finder assessment on coaching executives, their teams, individuals, a lot of organizations will have uh, brand new team members take Strength Finder early on and Mike gets to work directly with them. He also works with um, our, our uh, more in-depth interviews, so whether that's hiring people for manager roles, sales roles, um, and then giving feedback um, from those interviews back to the managers. And again, from a Gallup perspective, we use both those selection tools um, from the kind of can they do the job, um, do they have that natural talent, but then Strength Finder leveraging that for how they do it. So again, Mike really has become a master over the last 15 years of, of leveraging both those tools together. Mike, want to welcome you, uh, and thanks again for being here with us today. Thanks, Jeremy. Thanks for inviting me. I, I'm looking forward to it. So Mike, one of the quick our coaches, and this is kind of the, the premise of even um, the, the title of the show, being called to coach, but tell us about your journey. Again, mentioned. 25 years with Gallup, the last 15 um, in the world of, of coaching um, and advising, consulting, you know, managers and teams around their strengths, around their talents. Tell us a little bit about your journey. What did it mean for you to really have this sense of, of feeling like you're doing what you were called or created to do? Well, so Jeremy, that's a great question. You know, I I wish I could have this story of this grand event or something that just came to me in, in, in the night and said, I've got to do this. But 
you know, really what it was, I didn't even think about this for a, a great length of time before and said I'm working to this, but it was a lot of different voices, I think, that kept saying a similar thing to me. And um, they kept saying, you know, I'm good at one particular thing, and, and the more I heard that, that I just needed to listen to it. You know, as younger, I don't think I listened to it as well. I wanted to be a, you know, a radio DJ or, you know, a stockbroker, but, um, or even a computer programmer, but the more I, you know, the more I st started hearing these things, and um, it, it just, it just said, okay, this is what you got to do. And I started having a lot of conversations like this with people um, before we even had the Strengths Finder tool, because that came, you know, about in 2000 when we could start really using it. Um, right. It, you know, and the Mike, other thing quick, you talked about. What, yeah, what, what are your top five? Uh, strategic, relator, woo, arranger, and maximizer. Okay, cool. Yeah, keep, yeah. Go, keep going. Thanks. Thanks. So, um, so you talked about selection instruments, and, you know, my first work with those was actually getting the job here at Gallup because we go through that. And, um, you know, I, I wanted to move into a different job, and I said, hey, I really like computers, and so I took an interview for it. And they came back and said, Mike, that's not you. And I was, I was so upset. I was like, what? I'm, I'm good with them. I can do this. And then eventually, you know, it came just a little bit later, but someone said, well, Mike, are you going to really love working in front of a screen all day and not talking that much to people? And it just hit me. No, not at all. I would, I would probably get very, very bored in that job and have to quit. So um, they pointed me to other things. And again, I've had some really good mentors that I think have really gotten me there. Um, both personally and then at work, that really thought about it. So you know, one of one of those you know mentors or people that I know were influential to you is you obviously had the chance to work at Gallup when Don Clifton was walking the halls. Um, again, we always talk right. about even Kurt Kurt Leesville kind of being you know one of the, one of those uh, modern day kind of you know in front of the audiences and, yeah. and coaching people and advising us as coaches like Don often did, but. I would love to hear, and I know many of the coaches out there who have obviously read Don's work, we're all fans of, of the, the Clifton Strength Finder. What are what are one or two of those Don stories that, that you just remember yeah. that maybe even again was maybe one of those informal mentoring advising you or, or, or giving you insights to go, this is what I want to give my life to? You? Absolutely. Yeah, you know, it was there I was even younger. What was I in my early 20s and this, you know, kind of fresh faced out of college and um, I worked as a project manager for a number of years before this and um, started working on some things and then they, there was a public release poll that was being done. And this is one that Don really loved um, to be a part of and it was something that went into a magazine. I still have it somewhere. I don't, I don't know where that's at, but I just remember thinking, oh my gosh, I've got to work with him on this. This is going to be a little bit you know, intimidating and everything. So first meeting, I go over there and uh, go into his office and very quickly, within a minute or so, you know, he had just broken some things down and was really able to see me not for this real young kid just out of college, but for somebody who had a talent that, that he was asking me for advice. I was like, he's asking me for advice? You know, so it was, he put a lot of trust in talent for me, I felt, like at that moment. And my relator really comes out in that that um, just to have him do that. You know, we were probably 40 years apart at that time, you know, and we, we are 40, we were 40, we're 40 years apart. And um, it just, it, it really gave me a lot of confidence. And it helps me as I'm coaching today then to think about, you know, at whatever age it's at, there's talent there. And I, I aspire to be more like that in how I, how I kind of talk about it with people and show them trust in their talents. So that's a real big well, it one. Sounds like yeah. it just, it, it, yeah. it sounds like it modeled perfectly to that sense that we always tell our coaches is it's more important, again, as, as coaches, advisors, even strengths advocates, we, we want to get excited and be like, oh, man, did you see a maximizer? Let me tell you what I like about that. <laughs> but yeah. that stepping back to actually listen, draw out what's best in people, and realizing everybody has something to offer. I mean, it's so cool to hear you just talk about it, that Don was asking you, hey, Mike, what do you think about well, yeah. he probably had, had some insight around it, but both his ability to, to, you know, be curious and have that natural inquiry to ask you questions, but then also validate your talent. Right. Um, I mean, just how awesome it is that he model, modeled that to you. And so. I, I think it brought the best out of me for that project we worked on. It made me yeah, do so cool. much better. Yeah. 
So, you know, one thing that, that I'm curious about too, Mike, and this is, I know you have Maximizer High. I, yes. I have, you know, Maximizer is my top theme. Um, you know, Malcolm Gladwell in his book Outliers talks about that when people really begin to perfect something or yeah. to become successful or become experts, it really does take over, over 10,000 hours. And even, uh, you know, from a Gallup perspective, we talk about talent in and of itself does, isn't a strength. You need to invest in that. You need the experience, mm -hmm. the knowledge, and the skill. Talk about, I'd love to hear, and I don't know, I know you, you log your hours every week, but how many hours when you think about interviewing people around their talents and success and then even specifically just coaching people, I mean, I, I, my guess is you, you have exceeded that 10,000 number, but I'd love to, love to hear your thoughts and kind of just insights on that. Yeah, and uh, you know, I, I know I have, but I will tell you, I do not have the analytical talent or the discipline talent to track it. So I'm lucky that I have some people that have said, hey, Mike, did you realize you hit this milestone? I'm like, great. Okay. Um, but so right now... Which give us an example. What, what, are, what are some of those milestones? Yeah. Well, so for... Um, brag, even though, yeah. yeah, even though I... Yeah, I don't normally. But uh, 18,000 <laughs> interviews. 18,000 interviews where you're just asking, you know, maybe up to 100 questions of somebody. Kind of like the StrengthsFinder assessment's doing, but you just get a listen. And then, you know, when people say, how can you do that day in, day out? And I'm like, everybody's just so different. Sometimes you get real interesting answers, real deep answers. Sometimes they tell you things you think, you don't have to tell me that, but okay. Um, but then 7,000, over 7,000 um, in, individuals I've coached. So with those combined, I guess that gets me over 10,000, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, again, so, I mean, just think about the 7,000 individuals that you've coached one-on-one, -on -one, you know, an hour that you're helping mm -hmm. them think about and uncover their strengths. What are, what are some of the big impact moments that you've had? Again, to stay at this for as long as you have, what have been some of those impact moments where you just go, this is why I do what I do? And again, I know you work yeah. with individuals, managers, teams, even organizations. When you think about an organization you've been uh, mentoring, advising, coaching for 10 plus years, I know there's several of those clients. But what are, what are some of those key stories that that you have, that you'd share of here's the impact yeah. of strengths. You know, and so a lot of them, again, back to Relator, Jeremy, is that I'm best one-on-one -on -one with people is what I've found. And, and so a lot of them are just those one-on-one -on -one moments where you just have that, uh, just everything's just that person and they're so excited they can't wait to get on to the next part. My challenge is I don't have context and input very high, so I forget the exact stories as well as I could. but. Um, one that really sat with me is I used to, about five or six years ago, I was, um, I was a person who took the incoming coaching sessions for somebody just out there in the public that said, hey, Gallup, would you coach somebody? I, I'm not a part of an organization. And then, you know, now what we're doing, obviously, is we're opening this up quite a bit, which is great. Um, but the person came in and didn't tell me a whole lot about himself, you know, gave me his strengths. I like to get background on people, and he told me a little bit, um, spent... I think just one hour first um, talking with him, and uh, after that hour, he said, "You know, Mike, um, I really appreciate it. This was great. Um, I got to be honest with you. Um, I'm a CEO at a um, um, hospital system down in the South that has 10,000 employees." And I'm like, "Oh, the air went out of me to think, oh wow, this was a test, you know." And um, it, it, but he was this the warmest guy afterwards, and he said, "We need you to help with our." Um, executive team, and then we're going to want to cascade it down. I mean, he was getting so excited. And best you know, part for me is that that um, also just allowed me, you know, to have a difference overall in the patients um, that those people see. And they became really a strengths-based organization after that. You know, again, that guy probably would have gotten someone else if he didn't get me. But I just felt like, wow, the impact there. And, you know, I'm somebody, Jeremy, who cannot see. I can see blood, but I... I I would faint at the sight of a surgery or anything like that. So this is my one way I can help patients, right? Yeah, well, and I, I can imagine the coaches out there, out there listening to Mike, have gone like, "All right, why aren't more CEOs call, <laughs> randomly calling right. me?" You know, but just, just that that component of knowing, uh, again, Strength Finder impacts anybody from a, a student, you know, a 14 year old who, yeah. who's jumping online to take it through Strength Quest or something else. But that element of saying. Hey, like there are leaders everywhere that can see the value of it, and it's sort of like, right. like you said, it was kind of you. You went in blind. Um, I'm sure the moment he said, "By the way, I'm a CEO," and ten thousand, oh, you're like, oh, "Okay, wait a minute," you know. 
Yeah. Uh, talk, talk to you, and I know you and I have talked a little bit about this, but yeah. there's that element for a lot of coaches out there, especially those who have gone through e- either a two-day you know, training program with Gallup mm-hmm. or a four-and-a-half-day accelerated program. Um, you know, They'll often just say, gosh, I'm so nervous. I don't know where to begin, mm-hmm. and how do I prep? When, at what stage do the nerves go away? So again, you you've been doing this a long time. What 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 stage do do we not get nervous? Do we just jump in everything with confidence? You, you know, I'm 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 one coach here at Gallup, but I tell you, they haven't gone away from me yet. You know, I still and now they're better. They're they're much much better. But I still have a little bit of this nervousness before a call. And um, there's someone who's um, been at Gallup even longer than me, some 35 years, and and she's been a mentor to me since I was very young. And um, she's. She heard me saying, well, just not sure how this is going to go, and I'm a little bit worried about it. And she said, Mike, you've been doing this for how many years? You know this. Go, just go do it. And, you know, I, I thought to myself is, you know what, um, that's what makes me better. If, if I'm nervous about it and thinking, how is this going to go? And Jeremy, it's probably my strategic theme and arranger maybe a bit that says, you know, if I stop thinking about it and kind of not worrying about it but just being a little bit nervous – I might lose my edge. So it makes me better. It's kind of back to that CEO. I think if I was off that day, if I wasn't a little bit nervous about mm-hmm. just a random call, I might not have done very well. So Yeah. Well, and you know that you know that as well as anybody, Mike, even even back, I know in the early days of interviewing when Don Clifton just wanted to study excellence in a role in a role, we were studying not just you know, teachers and managers and salespeople, mm-hmm. but it was even professional athletes and musicians. And again, even when you talk to people who ha- have done, you know, their their kind of their talent, their trait, whether it's even performing on stage or performing, mm-hmm. you know, even in the Super Bowl, yeah. you would, you would hear from some of those people. Those nerves actually make them come alive. It's kind of there's a there's a saying, hey, it's not just the mundane. And I get excited to know again, almost from a maximizer perspective of. There's a little bit like a doctor going into surgery where you're going on this coaching call. Yeah. It's okay to be a little nervous that I want to I want to really help them to to drive forward and do something different. Right. So. Right. Hey, real real quick too, and I apologize for the background noise if you guys are picking that up a little bit. Um, not my flight, somebody else's. So I'm still uh-huh. I'm still good. Um, but but uh, I'd love to hear kind of tips and tricks. So what are things like okay. I think even just some of the ideas you were sharing there of. It's normal to get nervous. Here's how I deal with it. What are some other tips and tricks that you've begun to um, really kind of perfect or make part of your coaching style that's worked for you that really might might be a, a, a tool that, that some of the other coaches out there could begin to integrate into their coaching style as well? Yeah. No, I love thinking about that. And with the maximizer, again, always what am I learning? But um, – there, there, you know, there's always a little bit of, of uh, different tips you have for different themes, different things you kind of think about them. Um, one for me that I, I love to get to, and it depends a little bit on that person's theme and on the discussion, uh, but is um, asking them about, do you have a, a personal mission, a mission? What is your mission or purpose for others? Have you ever thought about that? And I try to emphasize the four others. Because otherwise, without that, people start talking to me about goals. So I want to achieve this level in a job. I want to you know, have a new house in a year. And so I'm trying to get them to think about what are you really here to do? And there's a help with that when you start. Then, then you can start tying that back to, okay, with your strengths, then how are you going to get there? And if there are some challenges in that, how does that recenter you to what's the most important thing that you're going to do rather than just, you know, I'm, I've got these responsibilities, I've got to do it. Well, how do you select a little bit more where you put your time? So that's one. And, you know, I start with thinking about you probably have a mission around family and friends first. And then it spills over into work in a little different format. So that's a favorite one of mine. Um, the other thing that ties in with it is I kind of like a little bit of the, um, I don't know what the best word to say is, but maybe a little controversy that sometimes comes up around a theme. That somebody will say, I have significance, but it really, I don't like it because it sounds like I'm egotistical. And so that kind of actually gets me a little flow in to say, this is going to be a fun conversation and a good one, hopefully, for them if we can get to it, right? But um, I quickly diffuse that because uh, for significance, you know, my first thing is to say, this is really about impact. It's not necessarily just about the reward, the reward comes from the impact you have. And most people then quickly diffuse, oh, yeah, that's really well, and, mean. 
Yeah. Are yeah, I'd love to hear a little bit more on that too. And, and I know in the um, for the for the coaches out there who've been through our our training, they actually get to listen in on a call that you did where you're you're kind of coaching somebody. Yeah. And you have this art too, Mike. Again, for each of us, we've got our own kind of coaching style. But you've got this art of helping somebody who's struggling with it. So, for instance, with significance, mm -hmm. um, I know before you just say, "Hey, I think it's about." What are what are some of those key questions that you you ask, and again, maybe there's variations of them. It's not necessarily scripted, but where you kind of get them to to talk about what significance might look like for them, that, that then would say this is a positive thing, not a negative. It's not see how it's not about ego, but it's about impact. It's about influence in the world. What are what right. are some of those questions that you sometimes ask, even when you've got the idea of where to go? Right. How do you get them to kind of get there with you? Well, um, so first, if as long as they at least understand the theme, you know, sometimes with that significance, they're still on the cusp of understanding what it really means. But I'll say, well, it, it, so is there a story that came out for you that you can think of that has that significance element to it for you? And I get them to start talking about it. And then, you know, my job, I guess, is is what I was talking about, those voices that told me certain things that I think my job is to replay it a little bit for them. Okay, so... You know, it sounds like then with this, you're talking a bit more about this great impact you had, and rather than the reward you got on stage. And so it helps them to kind of twist it. And I think again, that's as in my coaching, I really want to help them to see some things that they're not noticing in their everyday words. They're not noticing that they're talking about a theme. Yeah. Yeah, and I know I know a lot. My own coaching with clients that, again, are, are less common in the database but seem to have more of the edge, significance or self-assurance. It, it's um, Even for me, self-assurance is a, a high high theme, and I think I remember Stosh mm -hmm. Walsh, who was on just a, mm -hmm. a few call to coaches ago. He was coaching me one time around it to say, here's how it out for me, but here's, Jeremy, how I see it as good. Can it sometimes be bad and get in your way? Absolutely. Yeah. But I think what you just talked about, see – the good elements of it, obviously, the same that you're, so that they can then manage kind of the edge to it, but really focus on that on that power piece, which I think is is so right. critical. Right. So. Absolutely. Scott, any have coming in from chat for Mike? Scott, you're muted. I think you. There we go. Is that better? Yeah. Oh, sorry oh, about go. that. There you go. Yep. Mm -hmm. Sorry about that. Uh, yes, we do have a, a couple of questions. Um, you know, one, Mike, you you had touched a little bit on, uh, you know, your your nerves a little bit and kind of that, uh, you know, fear maybe a little bit, but you've got yeah. that nervous type stuff. And and Maureen uh, Monte makes the uh, comment that, you know, if if the nerves are are what kind of gives you the strength and the energy to to go in and do it, if you can control those nerves and put them into your performance, uh, that you can uh, really kind of use that to your advantage as opposed to not, uh, you know, letting the nerves take over. Do you find that's true with uh, when you get into coaching situations like that? Your nerves are, if you can control them, they're actually a positive for you. Right. I, that's a great point that Maureen brings up. I think that's what, what happens, you know, and so up to the point where I'm on actually the phone with them or in person with them, um, I think those nerves are getting me better, and then it starts to flow. The flow happens from that and Aids. You might still come back with a little bit when they when they hit you with a real good question, but I, I think that's a great point she brings up. I it, that's that's where it hones in there. So I don't know. This is one of the things that's maybe hard for me to describe how it happens. And I think Maureen talks about it better than than I have. But there must be something that it switches for me after I'm on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Um, John was asking about, uh, you know, you talked about some of those interviews we were doing that were more like behavioral yeah. type interviews. Um, he's found that those types of interviews can be very effective in his work. Uh, yeah. How do you, you know, do you see the same, that those behavioral interviews help you? Absolutely. Um, in, in coaching, is that, did John say, talk about coaching, Scott? Yeah. Okay, absolutely. So, yeah, that's neat that John's doing that too because it does um, – it gives me that fuller picture of a person. You know, in, in coaching, we're asking maybe a question and talking about it for five or ten minutes. In the behavioral interviews, 
I might be asking, I think I said 100, 100 questions in maybe an hour and a half. And so you're just listening and soaking it in, and I'm not thinking about what do I have to say back to the person. I'm just being able to just listen and not think about where are we going to go. So it's definitely, I love it. Good. And uh, we have another question. Uh, uh, they'd like to know about your, your blend of strengths and, you know, especially how you use Woo Maximizer and Strategic in your coaching. Um, but also, uh, you know, knowing that for coaches, one of the, the themes we see a lot is individualization and kind of where mm -hmm. does individualization fall in your 34, but then also how did the Woo Maximizer and Strategic all work together for you? Okay, so we'll talk about individualization, but they caught me there. It's not very high. <laughs> um, the the woo strategic and maximizer, you know, it's um, I, I think it's it's that I've honed over over the years. How do I get a person to feel at ease earlier on? Um, because many times the people I'm talking to are nervous. Who's this guy? And you know, what's he going to talk about? Now, I bet the coaches here, some of them have that real already a tight relationship with someone they're coaching. But so it's been each over time that maximizer say, okay, that one didn't go so well. I mean, even to the point, Scott, of where I'm, uh, as I'm, as I'm getting off the phone, I think about, you know, did I end that well? Mm -hmm. And did they, did they really get something out of it? And did they feel better about themselves as well as have something to specifically do? Strategic was one I didn't know how it worked for me for a long time. And then my manager, you know this person, when I was a uh, project manager, said, oh my gosh, Mike, you're doing that every single day. Mm -hmm. And so I think it flows through that so much that I have to stop and, and think about it. Sure. So those work that way. Um, the, the individualization is in the middle. Mm -hmm. And um, this is where what John brought up about the behavioral interviews, having yeah. so many of those. And I think I had about a year of those before I started strengths coaching. Now that, not to, that for anybody else they couldn't do it a lot sooner, right? Sure. But um, but that helped me, and as well as the relator. The more I just ask good questions, people tell me. Mm -hmm. I don't have empathy mm -hmm. high either, and I say, you know what, I'm not going to read what you're feeling. I have five sisters. I can't read what they're feeling, but I say, hey, let me ask you a good question, and hopefully I'll get to the point of it. Sure, and I think that's you know a, a good reminder for a lot of our coaches that there are not perfect strengths for, right. a per for a certain role, and you can right. use your other strengths, even though individualization is not high for, for you personally, you have other strengths that, that come in and, and work together to make you a great coach and, and doing what you do with strengths and, and coaching people. Right. So, uh, it's, you know, you, just because you don't have individualization high doesn't mean that you're not going to be right. a good coach. Right. Mm -hmm. And one, one quick part to that too, yeah. Scott, is I think it comes to my other talent up higher, which is ideation, that I, I regularly try to make sense of that. Well, why did that person just do that? Um, you know, not not so much just as I'm going through the uh, grocery store, but um, I, I do it at times to say, okay, what had just happened there? But if I just went in cold, I'm not going to be that person that can just say, oh, I see that right away. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so that's uh, about all we have on the chat room today. Uh, Jeremy, do you have any concluding thoughts or, or anything else you'd like to talk to Mike about? Question, question for you, um, and okay. I, this this actually plays into the new EP10 tool. So I know you mentioned okay. at the start of the call, Scott, that that's mm -hmm. you know, that's where Jim is today, kind of talking to some students about mm -hmm. it. We've as we, uh, um, kind of educate coaches around this, Mike. We've really framed that it's more similar to a lot of Gallup select. You need to decide to. I think we lost Jeremy. Uh, yeah, a Jeremy, bit. we're uh, or the Clifton Strength Finder. Okay. We we obviously have said they really need to take both, but the way you coach them around it is, you know, that 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 the entrepreneur tool is more about can you do it or these are, are the what, and then Strength Finder is the how. Do you have any other advice that our coaches who are using both those tools, um, or other behavioral tools like the question that came in of of just how you integrate or frame that up or where strengths comes into play when you're giving feedback to an individual or a hiring manager? Yeah, so I, I think I got all that you said. You broke out for a second, but it, it makes a lot of sense. Um, yeah, you know, it, I think it really is that. So if you look at um, a particular theme that you have up high determination, 
you know, that might be up high. What are the supporting themes that come to that? And because sometimes without that, you might say, well, where do I start? This is giving me some good suggestions on the EP10, but it's not, um, it's not telling me, you know, what to do. But then if I think back to, well, my, I have a strength for um, focus or self-assurance or whatever it is, I think that ties in really well, mm -hmm. really well to this. Yeah. Um, we did get just uh, a couple more quick follow-up questions Mike. here okay. uh, for Mike. Uh, um, oh, Jeremy, Mike. Yeah. Okay. Um, the, uh, John, uh, in following up to that behavioral uh, okay. interview question, wanted to know, you know, does Gallup do anything with teaching others how to do behavioral interviews or, or have uh, behavioral interviews available for others to use? Uh, similar to how we do Strengths Finder, and and I'm not aware of any, but I, I don't know if you are at all, Mike. No, um, right right now we don't. We actually I, I, we used to teach this, and this was before my time, and Don did this mm -hmm. was teaching those teacher perceivers. Perceivers, yeah, yeah. So we called it perceivers, and it was in line with what John's talking about. Um, but um, but not that I'm aware of either, Scott. Mm -hmm. And I think part of it is is that it's. Um, it just was a lot of recertification, even more so than you probably have to for um, coaching to make sure are you asking it right. Yeah. Um, but I think most people know too that this is where Strengths Finder came from is all of these perceivers and interviews that, you know, that's where Don brought it from. That that was the basis that he used for the mm -hmm. research behind Strengths Finder. Strengths Finder. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Uh, one more quick question, and we'll conclude with this one from Lori. Uh, okay. She wonders if you have any suggestions for coaching in a group setting uh, rather than one-on-one. -on -one. Do you ever do any coaching in a group setting? And if so, what sort of tips do you have for kind of sharing yeah. information when you're talking to multiple people at once? Yeah, I do. Um, if, if you can, ideally it would be that you've hopefully coached them separately first so they come in a little bit warmer. You can make some quick hits of things that you see in a person or in a team um, that you can talk about and just start asking some good questions about it. But I think about that and then I think about who are going to likely be my talkers in the room, um, who are going to be the ones that um, you know are much, much more likely to be excited about it, and I call them out. Um, I have Includer High, and it's that you know if you don't, if you just say who has a question, everybody kind of says, well, you know, I don't have one yet, but I like to have those people. So there's maybe where it's a little strategy for me too, Scott. Um, Perfect. And that's a good question. Perfect. Absolutely. Okay. Well, I think we're going to throw it back to Jeremy. His connection's getting a little sketchy, <laughs> but uh, we're going to let him go ahead and uh, see if he can uh, wrap up here just a little bit, and then I'll close the show. Try to try to get my final words in if they don't, <laughs> don't break up yeah. too much. But yeah, Mike, thank. Thanks so much. I mean, super insightful. Um, one one question I'll throw at you, and I'll I'll go ahead, Scott, and just tee up. You know that we'll be back. You know, two weeks from now, again is our next our next call to coach. I'll let you share kind of addition. Mm -hmm. Oh, we oh, completely we, lost him. <laughs> we completely lost Jeremy uh, <laughs> off the program. I think right. his Wi-Fi might have uh, stopped. But uh, on that note, Mike, thank you very much for coming. Yes. On behalf of Jeremy, I'll I'll thank you and and for being on the show. And we'll remind everyone to take full advantage of all the resources we have available at gallopstrengthcenter.com. Additionally, if you would like to send us your questions or comments offline, we'd like to or would like to be a guest blogger on the coach's site, email us at coaching at gallop.com. You can also catch the recorded audio and video of this show and all past webcasts, as well as the links to our Facebook and YouTube pages over at coaching.gallop.com. Please join us on February 20th for Gallup's next Call to Coach webcast. Thank you for joining us today, and goodbye, everyone. All right, thanks. All right, and, and we just got Jeremy back in for the uh, last Maybe part of that one. there, but uh, we're, we're already uh, shut down, Jeremy, but we're still live, so if you want to talk to anybody um, and say any concluding thoughts, everybody should still be there. Yeah, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. It's, it's froze up on my end. My, so the que question I was wanting to throw out to you, Mike, and this is this is fine for kind of post show. I cut off again. I'll just <laughs> disappear. Um, but the question is, and this comes up a lot with the new EP10. So one of those one of those kind of key categories is relationship building. Mm -hmm. um, and when people look at that and then go, but wait, you know, my client has that high, but they don't have any relationship building themes from a strength finder perspective, you know, empathy and harmony and all those are lower. I know with a lot of our other assessments, 
where keywords like focus, you know, where we're talking, mm -hmm. we're talking about the talent profile versus strength finder. How do you approach that? Like, so if you just use that example of high relationship building, but you know, no strength finder relationship building themes, how do you approach, you know, that, that understanding for the person or even, I guess, ideas for our coaches of how do you, how do we make sense of that? Yeah, uh, it's part of a journey, I guess, a little bit than knowing right away. But I always look to other types of themes that say, you know, self-assurance. That they might say, I can go up and just talk to somebody anywhere. And if they have strategic with it, maybe they say, you know, I have a real need to do that. And so they they intentionally do it through those themes or you know any one of those that kind of get you out there talking. And you know, we would even say communication is influencing, but obviously that has a relationship element to it. So I look for those other supporting ones. Um, I, I don't know that I've ever come across one where it's kind of all thinking themes and then you get that relationship building in the EP10. That'd be an interesting one. I'd have to figure that one out, I guess. Yeah. No, and I think just hearing your insight on that, because I know with a lot of our other tools, it's kind of some of that some of that same piece. So. Yeah. Great. Cool. Scott, I don't know if you've got anything else. I'm going to drop. Um, you guys can keep rolling if yep. there are some other questions in chat. We, but we Mike, actually... Thanks so much, we, we actually yeah. wrapped while you were dropped off the line, so we, we yeah. just gave everybody a little bonus section here. There you go. Afterwards. If you stay Excellent. if you stay after yeah. the trailers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This was stay after. a little a little bonus Jeremy and Mike today. Yeah. There you go. That's all right. righty. Well thanks for having so, me on, guys. Cool. Yep. Thank you guys right. very much. And uh, we will uh, end the broadcast here. Thank you.